It is great to be with you tonight. Whenever I come here, I feel like I have come home. I figured out I've been coming here almost 20 years. So some of you are like my brothers and sisters. And some of you are like my children. <laughs> but it is wonderful to be with you. It is my great honor to have time and connect and be family with you tonight. And I would invite you to turn in your Bibles to, we're going to look at the story of Jonah tonight. How many of you have heard the story of Jonah? Well, Jonah is an interesting story. It's in the Old Testament. And God spoke to Jonah to go to a different country and tell the country to repent. And Jonah didn't want to do that. How many of you have ever had God tell you something you don't want to do? I have had that happen uh, more than one time. And it is difficult sometimes to do what God tells you to do when you don't want to do that. But I want to encourage you with some things tonight to help you when God speaks to you and tells you something you don't want to do. The first thing I want to And so Jonah, uh, when God spoke to him, Jonah did not do what God said. In fact, Jonah did the opposite. God told him to go to the city of Nineveh. Jonah went the opposite way. Can I walk in front of this? It's okay, I won't like very verb. Okay, okay, okay. So he went the opposite way. And instead of going to Nineveh, he got on a boat and he went in the opposite direction. So he's on the boat and he's disobeying God. He's not doing what God told him to do. So there's a big storm and the sailors decide to throw Jonah over the boat. And when they do that, a big fish comes and swallows him. And he stays in the belly of the fish for three days. After three days, God speaks to the fish and says, puke. And the fish pukes up Jonah. And he pukes him up next to the city of Nineveh. Transportation and help to be obedient. So Jonah goes to the city and he tells the people in Nineveh, repent because God is going to kill or God is going to kill you. And the city listens to him and they all repent. That's not, that's not what Jonah wanted. Jonah wanted God to kill the city. So now it's even worse. He obeyed God and God didn't do what he wanted him to do. So Jonah is angry and pouty with God. And he walks away. 
đã tới. And he sees the city from the hill. Hay quật nó lỡ phnom muối hay quật mơ tới căn tí krong nô. And he's very angry. Hay quật khăng. And it's hot. Hay phong tầm mê cái đáu. And it's windy. Hay chọt bọ mọ cái đáu tiên. So God grows a vine to protect him from the heat. Bọn bạn ơi miên rọ cái chiết muối đó đầm bay ơi mà lộp quất. And Jonah is grateful for the vine. Thank you. Hay bọ ơi quật cái bàn giấy thao hay ơ con bọn đại bàn miên mà lộp ở lỡ nâng phong khăng. But then a worm comes and eats the vine. Bọn ta miên tầm cơ muối màu đáy xì đâm chơ nâng ơ linh. The vine withers. Đã ơ mưu bị ngốm. And then the wind blows and makes him even more miserable. And God has a conversation with Jonah. Now I told you this story just to be quick. But there are three lessons for us in this story. Lesson number one. Everybody say, Pi Moi. Pi Moi. Timoy, right? I'm right. My like my Kamai is amazing. <laughs> Not really. Um, so lesson number one is the fish. One fish. So the fish comes along. And, and he swallows Jonah. It's very uncomfortable to live in a fish belly for three days. If you think about it, it is smelly. There's stomach acid from the whale, the fish. And Jonah is stuck. No place to go. So I call this time out. In America, when we, with our children, we sometimes put them in time out. If you have children in America, instead of giving them a spanking, you may tell them, sit here in time out to take a break. Do you ever do that here? No, you hit him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I understand. And that's okay too. You can do what's appropriate for your culture. But in America, we put him in time out. And I think this was God's time out for Jonah. Jonah was disobedient. So God gave him three days for time out. And sometimes when we are disobedient, I like that God gives us a time out. God will speak to us and help us and give us some time to evaluate and reconsider. But sometimes the time out is uncomfortable. It doesn't feel good. You don't like the environment. You don't like it's uncomfortable. But it is a time out. To help you think about the disobedience. And get a second chance. So everybody say, number one. One fish. Number two. We have a second chance. The first chance, God spoke to him, go to Nineveh. He didn't do it. He ran away. But God gave him a second chance. And he spoke to him and said, go back to Nineveh. One fish, two chances. And I believe that God, when He gives us a second chance to obey, after a time out, we can take the second chance. And I like that God is a God of second chances. And third chances. 
Hãy tỷ bảy. And fourth chances. Ở các tỷ buồn. And fifth chances. Ở các tỷ trầm. How many of you have had God give you many many chances? Lại một bộ mình bắt bị sao? Ớt bỏng ao dương ở các mà đong hai mà đong tiết trong đồng nào chỉ vật bao dương? Very much so. Bật nè. So Jonah had one fish. Chẳng là lời nít lục Jonas còn bắn miên trầy mũi. And two chances. Hãy chỉ ở các tỷ pi bỏ cuốn. Now I want you to look at three appointments. Khiêm trọng là lại một bộ bàn khơi nơi chủng nua bay. In Jonah chapter 4, you're going to see in verse 6, it says that God appoints a plant. So this is after Jonah has preached in Nineveh, repent, repent, repent. And they did. And now Jonah's cranky. So God appoints a plant. And the plant grows up and protects him, shields him from the sun. And then in verse 7, it says God appoints a worm. And the worm comes and eats the plant. Then in verse 8, God appoints a wind. And the wind comes and makes it even more miserable for Jonah. One fish. Two chances. Three appointments. And the appointment is to have a conversation. All three appointments is to have a conversation with Jonah. Because what God says to Jonah in this conversation is very important. So in this conversation, God speaks to Jonah. And he says, I know you're mad. You're mad because the, the plant withered and, and fell and died. You're mad because the city repented. You're mad because I didn't destroy the city. But God says to him, do you have any reason to be angry? And then and he says, should I not have compassion on Nineveh, a city in which there are more than 120,000 people? So what God does is he speaks to Jonah. And he's challenging Jonah's perspective. At the very beginning, God spoke to him, go to Nineveh and tell them to repent. Jonah didn't want to do that. He wanted the people in Nineveh to die. He wanted God to punish them. And many times when we disobey God, it's because we want our own way. And it can be about us being selfish. But I like that God can do one fish, two chances, and three appointments to talk with us, to help us change our thinking. Because God is interested in people. Jonah wanted all the people to die. And, and God didn't want the people to die. God wanted the people to repent and change. And what God wanted to do was get Jonah into God's perspective. And when we are disobedient, I like that God gives us a fish. Time out. God gives us a second chance to obey. 
And then God will have a conversation with us. To speak to us about our heart. Why are you angry? Why do you lack compassion? Why are you disobedient? Why are you running away? I have compassion. I want to help people. I want to reach people. I want to love people. I want to redeem people. And I want you to be a part of that. So sometimes when we are disobedient, we are disobedient because we are selfish. How many of you have ever been selfish with God? I want you to do things for me. My way. Bless what I'm doing. And all those people make them perish. And many times the people we don't like is exactly who God wants to redeem and reconcile. Can you think of some people that you don't like? Maybe somebody in your apartment building that you don't like, they're mean, ugly. Maybe you have someone in your class that is very rude and unkind. Maybe you have a mother-in-law who is not nice. Maybe you have a father who has been very, very uh, hurtful to you. And a lot of times with people that we don't like, we want God to not like them too. But God has compassion on them. God loves the people that are difficult for you. And there are a lot of times God will send you to those difficult people. The people you don't understand. The people you don't like. The people who have been rude to you. Maybe even people who have hurt you. But God has compassion. And God can send us to them. And God can work to restore and redeem them. I'll never forget one time when I came here. There was a young man that I saw, uh, he was in the streets. He was a lady boy. And I remember he caught my attention. And I thought about him for a, a little bit of time. And I came and I preached here on a Sunday morning. And that lady boy that I saw actually came to church and came here. And at the end of the service, he received Jesus into his heart. And I was surprised. Because that's not somebody that I normally hang out with. And I found God giving me compassion for him. And so the next day, I was doing some work. I have an NGO called Saving Moses. And I was behind in, uh, back behind here in Sangwanche. We call it Plankville. When it was just planks, you know, wood planks over sewage. Do you remember this a long time ago? Like 10 years ago. And so I was there doing some outreach into that area. It was very slummed, very bad. And I was 
going door to door. And we, we do things to help with babies and toddlers. And I saw a baby. And I said, oh, we have to stop here. And the lady asked us, oh, come in, come in. And we went in and there was, it was very dirty and not, you know, it was very messy. And there was a mattress with a bunch of clothes on it in the corner. And so we were there saying hello, Chimnip you know. The regular things, being polite. And as we're talking, the clothes move and this person pops up, sits up off the bed. It was the same guy that had just come to Jesus the day before at church. And he looked at me, what are you doing here? Like you're at my house. And I looked at him, what are you doing here? And it was an unusual encounter, but it was very much a God encounter. And he would not be a person that I would expect to go to. But by being obedient to God, I felt tremendous compassion for him. And year after year, I came to continue to visit him. To pray with him. Some days, some years, he was doing better than other years. But my obedience to God helped change my heart to have compassion. To have compassion for people who are not like me at all. And to let God love through me. So rather than being pouty like Jonah, Let's let God love us and love through us. Let's not be, let's not be disobedient. Let's not run away. But let's run into God's direction and let God speak and minister and love through us. Because as we do that, you will see God will change you on the inside. And you will find that obeying God is a lot easier than disobeying and, and being swallowed by a fish. So I'd like for you to close your eyes for a moment. Because some of us in the room have been disobedient. We have run away from God. And God wants to minister to you. And encourage you to come back and obey. So if you have been disobedient, uh, something God has told you to do, Put your hand on your heart. And I'm going to pray for us. That God would help us. And help change our hearts. So that we would be obedient. Father, I thank you for each person here. I pray for each person watching online. For each of us who have been disobedient. We repent. We're sorry for being selfish. 
We ask you, Father, and thank you for your forgiveness. Please give us a second chance. And those conversations we need to have with you, Father. Please help us to be honest with you. And to hear you speaking with us. Father, I thank you for loving us well. And we give you permission to love through us as well. Thank you for helping us to walk with you and to be obedient to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As we finish, um, I want to minister a couple verses. And uh, I, love, I love getting to watch Holy Spirit move and minister and do the gifts of the Holy Spirit, right? So I want to minister a verse to this gentleman through here in a green shirt. Sitting next to the guy in the white shirt. Yep, exactly. And the verse I have for you is Isaiah 64, verse 4. ខ្ញុំនឹងអានជូនព្រះអង្គតែងតែប្រណីសណ្ដោះអស់អ្នកដែលប្រព្រឹត្តអំពើសុជ្ជរិតដោយចិត្តរីករាយគឺអស់អ
chúng dân nông ta bản to thoải bằng công prachi mà cha sẹp dụng ní hay kho cùng pi mui tiệt để ban ao mà căn khiom there is a, a part of the worship talked about receiving strength from god chúng chia chia kho cùng pi đã chơi nhầm pi nó pi đã dân tặng ao để ban thoải bằng công prachi mà cha khi nào pi đã dân tu xong cùng lắng tham ấy để mọc pi bằng and strength and, and encouragement for this year hay xong mấy bọn phơ ca phơ cái ca nông chủng lợn đuông chật bao nhiêu người tôi cầm lăng tôi tôi à vậy bị bọn mà căn chỉ vật bao nhiêu môn sân môn về để cái ca để dân nông phơ cho nam ní. And many of you raised your hand saying I need God to give me strength. Lúc nãy mong bố bảo mẹ đã trời ca cầm lăng thay mấy bọn bọn xem đẹp cho nam thay mấy. And so there is a verse God wants to minister to you and would I would encourage you that you memorize. Dân chăm sóc mấy lúc nãy mong bố bàn chôn chăm kho cầm pin đi xem đẹp cho nam ní bao nhiêu người xong ở chăm từng ở kia. And it says in Psalms 118. Verse 14. And Where you are discouraged, where you lack joy, where you lack hope, the Lord is your strength. The Lord is your song, and He has become your salvation. He can bring you through what seems to be fire. What seems to be impossible. What seems to exceed your abilities and your strength. The Lord is your strength and your song. And He has become your salvation. Amen. Amen. New life. Amen. Amen. God Amen. bless you. So my bands run. I come to come tap, grab a tool, not tiny, but you look at the check, and not come lang, that I look at Bampo Nakne. I present the look at Bampo Nakne, my own tap on my papa jet, and my show room tonight, no ความตรอกิจการได้กรมจุลมชีวิตไทยเพื่อนักท่องเที่ยวสายนักออกประกาศสักนักดำกรมจุลมลูกเนี่ยบางคนอาจโชว์รวมจมูกในกรมจุลม